Hello, my love, and welcome to another episode of Involved in the Podcast. I am especially excited about this episode for two reasons. One, what I'm talking about is something that I've been working on for a really long time and that I'm really grateful to finally be sharing with you and starting to be open and utilizing this framework that I've created, which is what this episode is going to be about. But two, because I am recording this for YouTube. So if you're listening to this, there is also a video version on YouTube. If you're watching this, hello, welcome. This is Embold in the podcast, and I am so grateful for you for being here, no matter where you are watching or listening to this from or what device or platform you're tuning in from. It just means the world. And this podcast is one of my favorite things to do within my business. I can talk underwater. I love to chat. I'm a Gemini and I can chat for ages, but, um, let's dive into it without kind of spending too much time catching up on anything. I just want to dive right into this because today's topic is my signature framework which is something that I have, as I said before, spent so long crafting and creating and perfecting. This framework is everything that I have learned that I feel is important in living a cyclical life put into three very simple steps. This framework is going to be at the basis of everything that I do, of every program I create, of every piece of content I share. And it is called... If you know, if you know me and you've been following me, you know, I love alliteration, love it. Every program I have is labeled with some form of alliteration. So it's only fitting that my framework is called the feminine flow framework. This is the framework that is going to help you learn how to live in alignment with your cycle, create a lifestyle that feels expansive and open and fun, pleasurable, that also helps heal your cycle, that balances your hormones, that has your cyclical nature in mind, that creates space for you to achieve your dreams, to get things done with more ease and less effort and pressure. This is something that... I wish someone had handed me. I wish this was a framework when I was struggling with problem PMS, when I was struggling with feeling completely burnt out and overwhelmed by all the things that I had to do, when I was dealing with imbalanced hormones, debilitating mood swings and all of that. So I'm so excited to share this with you. The Feminine Flow Framework contains three main pillars. And these are the three things that I learned that changed my entire life and cycle when I started my cyclical living journey. Now, I hear so often from women, clients, people that follow me, that they really want to learn how to live in alignment with their cycle. They want to understand their cycle more, but that it's overwhelming and they feel like it's too hard or it's going to take too much time. And I understand so deeply when I was starting out, I felt completely overwhelmed with so many different pieces of information, often conflicting pieces of information. And it was just really hard for me to understand what was actually going to make a difference and what was important. So to save you that time and energy, I have created this framework and the three most important things that I have found to help you live in alignment with your cycle, live an intuitive and intentional life is connection and clarity, ritualize and romanticize and systems and sacred scheduling. I told you I love alliteration. I told you. So Let me break these three pillars of the feminine flow framework down for you so that you can understand them a little bit better. So connection and clarity talks about getting clear on your cycle. This is step number one before anything else, before learning anything ritual or routines or structures, it's important that you understand your cycle. It's important that you are clear on 
what is normal in relation to your cycle and what is just considered common. This is important because if you are trying to live in alignment with your cycle and you still have this feeling of it's a burden, it's unnecessary, it's meant to be painful, this is just how it is, it's going to be really hard to transform that mindset just by doing things, right? Just by creating these beautiful rituals and structures. You actually have to get clear on what is your cycle supposed to be like? Why is your cycle important? How does it impact you and your day-to-day life? How can it improve your life? How can you learn to live in alignment with it, right? So this is all about understanding your cycle and it's called connection and clarity because I wanted you to understand it's not just about being clear and having the clarity on your cycle. It's about connecting to it. So this is about, I talk a lot about inner seasons. This is about not just being clear on what your inner seasons are, but it's about connecting to the energy of those inner seasons. So understanding them at an intellectual level and then embodying and feeling that energy, feeling that connection to your inner seasons, the connection to your cycle. This is the framework basis, not basis, foundation. This is the foundation of the feminine flow framework. (laughs) I can't speak today, is understanding your cycle, connecting to it, connecting to the energy of your inner seasons, and really moving from this place is going to be so beneficial. I see a lot of people trying to skip past this step. They want to just get on with the beautiful routines. They want to just get on with knowing the tips and tricks and tools on how to live a cycle-led life and unlock the powers of your inner seasons. But without first understanding why this is so important, without first understanding how your cycle impacts your life, as I said before, it's going to be very, very hard. Then once you have connection and clarity to your cycle, I'm going to take a sip of my my tea. Once you have that connection and clarity, we move on to the second pillar which is ritualize and romanticize. This is important because we are told so often that our cycle is a burden. It is gross. We get uncomfortable when we think about it. We don't want to talk about it, think about it, all the things. We also have this lifestyle and live in this society that is not just making our cycles taboo, but that is not designed for us to fully honor our inner seasons. That is so go, go, go onto the next thing. Da, 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 da. And this is why you see so many tired, burnt out and exhausted people, depleted of energy, disconnected from their bodies, especially women, because we have a 28 day cycle. We have a 28 day cycle and we are trying to fit into a world that operates off of a 24 hour cycle. And even as I say this, I want you to know that it is possible for you to still exist in this current society and live your 24 hour, you know, life with your job, your, your responsibilities while honoring your cycle. There are, there is podcast episode out about that. I'll link that below, but it's possible But how we can make it more easeful for ourselves is creating rituals and routines that in the pockets of time that we do have in our busy schedule, that we can honor ourselves, honor our energy, give back to ourselves. Romanticizing your life is important and is one of the biggest, most important parts of this whole framework that I really don't want anyone to skip over because it might seem a bit frivolous and fluffy, it's important because when you romanticize your daily habits, when you romanticize and find magic in the mundane moments of your day, of your job, of the tasks that you might not really love to do, but you know you have to do in order to function as a human being or um, get where you want to get to in your business or your work, 
that makes it so much easier for you to show up for yourself. It makes it so much easier for you to show up for your tasks, right? If you see your rituals and your routines, your habits as a burden, you're not going to want to do them. If you think of your routines as a chore, they're going to feel like a chore. If you romanticize them, they're going to feel spacious. And that's not to say that they will feel completely 100% sunshine, rainbows, beautiful all the time. There's definitely going to be times that certain things feel harder than others. But with learning how to find the magic in the mundane, making your routines extra special, extra nourishing, and then conjoining that with the next pillar, which I will get to in a minute, scheduling with your cycle so that you are doing things in times of your month and times of your cycle that make the tasks easier for you. This is so important. And this honestly was the pillar that shifted the most for me. Connecting with my cycle and receiving clarity around it, game changing. But the rubber really met the road for me when I started to create ceremony and ritual around my cycle. If you follow me on Instagram, you know I do a monthly cycle ceremony in my inner spring and just basically creating a ceremony and a ritual around my cycle that also brings me that connection. It brings me that clarity. And then I also bring in pillar number three, structure and scheduling by using what I have received, the guidance that I've received from my cards, from my intuition during the ceremony to plan out my month, plan out the next cycle. So this is the one that I have put in the middle because the foundation of the feminine flow framework is connection and clarity. And then the mountaintop, I would say, is ritualize and romanticize. This is the peak. This is where everything starts shifting. And then the integration, the last pillar, is systems and sacred scheduling. And I want to talk about this in more depth in another episode. And I'm going to be creating a YouTube video all about how to schedule with your cycle. If you want to know even more and go even deeper than I will ever go on YouTube or the podcast, I do have my signature self-paced cyclical living program. There's the alliteration again and get ready for some more because it's called the Sacred Cycle Experience. And this experience is, as I said, self-paced and you learn how to connect with your cycle, you learn how to schedule with your cycle, and you learn how to create those rituals and that romanticized routines in alignment with your cycle. But let's dive in to pillar number three, systems and sacred scheduling. This is my favorite part. I think I could say that about every pillar, but this is the part that makes everything feel a bit more tangible, right? So as I said, rubber meets the road when you start to ritualize and romanticize your cycle. I feel like the light bulb comes on with the connection and clarity, rubber meets the road, things start moving with ritualize and romanticize. And then when you get into systems and sacred scheduling, it all starts to kind of feel like things are falling into place. Like, oh, yeah, this is how life is supposed to be. This is how my day can get to feel. And it makes it all really tangible and really real world feeling, if that makes sense. It, it makes it more, more real and tangible. I can't think of another way to, to say that really. So this pillar is all about creating a, a schedule, a sacred schedule, as I like to say, because It is sacred. Your time is sacred. Your time is sacred because it is a finite resource. You can't get more of it. It is your most precious asset. And we spend our time so often unintentionally, unconsciously doing things that are habits that are not serving us. So creating a sacred schedule is more than just creating a schedule for you to get things done and adding 50 million things to your to-do list. It's creating a schedule that honors your cycle, that honors your energy, that honors your goals, your dreams, your aspirations, that makes space for your routines and rituals, but also makes space for your work, your personal life, your social life. 
And that's really important because as I said, time is your most precious resource. So let's make sure we're using it in a way that isn't toxic and hustly and throwing these precious minutes and precious hours just out the window, right? So creating a sacred schedule is all about using your cycle seasons, using the energetics of the different phases of your cycle to create a routine and a calendar that is full of tasks at certain times that is, it's basically optimizing your calendar using your cycle. It's like, what can I get done? And when can I get it done with the most ease? When is my literal brain chemistry, hormones, and energy going to be primed to the best, like most optimal performance for this particular task? Because certain times of your cycle, you're going to be more likely to want to do things and more able to do things with more ease and actually enjoy them than other times of your cycle. For example, if you're on your period, the last thing you probably want to do is clean your entire house, top to bottom, do a deep clean declutter. But when you're in your inner autumn, your premenstrual phase, as you're leading into your inner winter, your period, you are probably going to be able to clean with more enthusiasm and ease and the time will fly by like that. For me, I know I only ever clean, like deeply clean and declutter during my inner autumn. And it has made such a difference because I would try so often in other seasons of my cycle to do it before I even knew about this stuff. And I couldn't figure out why like one week a certain task felt so, so good and so easy. And then the next week it felt like I was pushing a freaking boulder uphill and it just kept rolling down on me, right? I'm, I'm sure there are some of you watching or listening that can relate to this, but that's understanding your cycle energetics, your seasonal energetics and putting it into practice and integrating it into your life through your, through your structures and schedule. So we're also talking about creating systems. So I call them cyclical systems and systems are spacious. Systems make space for you to live your life. I don't want you to think about systems as these rigid things that keep you in a box and that cause you to stress or hold you back, fence you in. That's not at all what my version of systems are. I often use this analogy with my clients that your systems and your structures are like a bowl, right? This bowl has an open top. That means that, you know, there's no lid, things can pour in and things can pour out. You can take things out of that bowl. You can put things in. There is room, there is spaciousness, and it's a big, big bowl, right? The structures and systems are that bowl that hold within it your energy, your time, right? If you don't have that bowl and you take that away, your energy and time are just bouncing around and floating around aimlessly, right? Whereas your systems and schedules and structures hold a container to nurture, to guide, and to optimize all of that precious time and energy so that none is wasted, so that you're not spilling out everywhere and giving too much time here or not giving enough time to yourself over there or so people are just throwing things into your bowl. It's a sacred container and it creates space in your life. And this is game changing. Like, honestly, guys, the feminine flow framework is life changing. I I truly don't say that lightly. This is all of the things that changed my life and my cycle in a little framework that is so potent and powerful. And when I say that creating those systems and creating those schedules changed everything for me, I'm not kidding. <laughs> I'm not kidding. And I've seen it impact and shift so much for my clients that I have introduced this this to. I have had clients who have worked in the medical field. I have had clients that are musicians. I have had a client that worked in hospitality, mums, 
any lifestyle, any responsibilities that you have, any one, any woman, anyone with a womb, you can benefit from the feminine flow framework. If you were listening to this and you are thinking, I couldn't make that work because of X, Y, Z, I promise you it's possible. And if you want to listen more about how to live in alignment with your cycle in a world that doesn't honor your cycle, I will link the podcast episode I did about that below. And I highly recommend you check that out because that was really powerful. And I got a lot of messages from women saying, thank you. I really needed that perspective shift. I felt like I wasn't hearing a lot of what you were saying because I didn't think it applied to me, but that really shifted things. So if you're feeling any of those feelings come up, definitely check out that episode. But I wanted to announce this framework because it is my baby, the feminine flow framework. And Just let you know that with this framework comes a new level of what I am going to be offering, of how I am going to be serving. This is a version of a structure, right? Of a sacred structure that is holding the space for my work. This is literally me practicing what I preach and I honestly live and breathe what I teach. And that is why I feel I am such an excellent coach, if I do not say so myself, an excellent cycle coach, because I live and breathe this stuff. I don't just teach it. I don't just preach it. This is my life. This is what I do. Everything I'm teaching you, I have done, and I have done it for a long time now, and I have put it into practice, and I'm not gatekeeping this because I want it for every woman. I want this for you. I want you to live a life that feels intentional, aligned, spacious. I want you to have a period every month that feels easeful. I want you to be nurturing your time and energy while living your dreams and achieving your goals, right? That's what I want for you. And this is what this feminine flow framework is going to help with. So if you want to experience the feminine flow framework in practice, you can join me for one-on-one coaching. I have a few spaces available for the end of the year and this is a rolling enrollment. So whenever you're listening to this or watching this, definitely check it out. I will leave links below. Um, If you are interested in learning more and you have questions, I have a few spaces available for free 30 minute clarity calls where you and I can meet over Zoom with a cup of tea and just chat about how I can support you and whether we are a good fit. And I hope that if you feel the call, if you feel curious, that you go ahead and book that call. If you want to find more of me, definitely check me out on Instagram, Jess underscore Carreri. Again, that will be in the show notes as well. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. If you enjoyed this episode, please like, rate, and review. Leave a comment below if you're watching on YouTube. It greatly supports my channel and helps me to fulfill my mission of empowering women to connect and live in alignment with their cycle. I'm so grateful. Thank you for being here, and I will see you in the next episode of Emboldened the Podcast.